Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Android 11 running on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now this is known as the Omni-ROM. By the end of this video, I'll show you where to download it. You can flash it to an SD card or a USB drive slash hard drive slash SSD and get it up and running yourself. Now, before we get started here, I do want to mention that this is not for everyday use, just like basically any Android version for the Raspberry Pi. But this is the first image of its kind for the Raspberry Pi 4 being Android 11. So as you can see here, I'm using the 8GB Raspberry Pi. We have that Broadcom CPU, and I am overclocked to 2.1GHz. And for the display, we have that V3D. It does OpenGL ES 3.1. Now just like every release of Android so far for the Raspberry Pi 4, this does not have hardware decoding or encoding for video, but V3D is working so 3D games will be playable on this device. Now, it really depends on how hard the game is to run, but it actually does a pretty decent job, even with emulation. So the version that I have here is the Omni-ROM with Micro-G pre-installed. So I don't have Google Play, but I do have the Aurora services, and I also have the Aurora store. And from here, you can go in and download a ton of different apps. Now, there is another version that will be compatible with G apps, or GAPs as I like to call it, so you can install Google Play and the services and things like that to get it up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4. But I chose the Micro G version because I've personally never messed around with it. This is a de-googled version of Android, and it actually runs pretty decently on the Raspberry Pi 4, especially for being a first release. So let's get into a little bit of testing. Now, as for video playback, like I mentioned, it doesn't have hardware video acceleration. And I've tried YouTube, but I'm actually getting better performance out of Firefox. So we'll head over to the Firefox browser, I downloaded it from the Aurora store, and we'll just load up this video here. It does support Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but I am connected to my Ethernet adapter here. And let me get this ready. We're going to turn on Stats for Nerds and make sure we're at a higher resolution. We're at 720p, Stats for Nerds. And here it is. So... Through Firefox, video streaming really isn't that bad at 720p. It actually works better on this than it does in Raspberry Pi OS. As you can see, we're not dropping any frames here. And overall, it is a usable experience if you want to watch YouTube on your Raspberry Pi 4 using Android, but I do recommend using a browser to do it, like Firefox, which I'm using here. But as you can see, performance isn't that bad. It's actually pretty decent. We're going to go full screen with it. And I'm still getting the same great performance, at least with 720p. So we'll go ahead and back out of here. Now I wanted to move over to a 3D game real quick. We'll go with Real Racing 3. I need to connect my Xbox controller. So obviously we're not getting the best performance out of this game here that we could with a higher end chipset. But overall, seeing this running on a Raspberry Pi 4 is pretty awesome. Now this is running in native Android 11. This was downloaded from the Aurora store and it boots up and runs this 3D game, given this 3D game is very well optimized. But I recently reviewed a new $80 gateway tablet and it could hardly run this game, so seeing the Raspberry Pi 4 do it is pretty impressive in my opinion. Another thing that this version of Android does pretty well on the Raspberry Pi 4 is N64 emulation. I'm using Mupin 64 plus FZ. Again, got it from the Aurora store. I didn't have to sideload it or anything like that. And we're just going to test out Diddy Kong Racing real quick. And to tell you the truth, I was pretty surprised at how well N64 runs with Mupin 64 plus FZ on the Raspberry Pi 4 running Android 11. FPS is at the top here. We're at 20 to 30, which is how it ran on original hardware, and overall this is perfectly playable, and a lot of other games will be also. I wouldn't expect like 007 to be playable, but there's a ton of N64 games that will run at full speed on this setup. So yeah, it's definitely not an operating system that I would personally use every day, but seeing Android 11 running on the Raspberry Pi 4 is pretty cool in my opinion. 
Now we're going to move over to my Windows PC and I'm going to show you how to get this up and running on your Raspberry Pi. It's super easy to do and if you're already familiar with flashing images to an SD card or external drive, all you need to do is follow the link in the description. You can use Etcher or the Raspberry Pi Imager. It's really up to you. Okay, so if you're ready to get this Android 11 Omni ROM up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4, let's go ahead and get started. First things first, you will need to have your firmware fully up to date on the Raspberry Pi. There's a couple ways to do it, but I'd say the best way to do it is from within Raspberry Pi OS on your Raspberry Pi 4. There's a lot of tutorials online on fully updating the firmware, so you need to do that before this will run on your Pi 4. I have a micro SD card inserted into my PC. It's just a 64 gigabyte SAN disk. First thing we're going to do is grab the ROM or the image. So we're going to head over to XDA, and this is all by Max Wen. He's a senior member over at XDA, does an amazing job with the Omni ROM setup, and he's done a great job with this one for the Raspberry Pi 4. Lots of great information here. This is a 64 bit build of Android for the Raspberry Pi. I recommend reading through all of his documentation, but in order to get the ROM, we're just going to choose Download. This is going to take us over to his download page, and like I mentioned, there's a micro G version. This is the one that I've been using. The weekly version will be compatible with GAPS or G apps, but you'll have to manually install it. So I prefer using this micro G. This is the first one that I tested and I think it works great, especially with that Aurora store pre-installed. So we're going to go with the micro G zip. It's going to start the download. The next thing we need to do is download an application that will allow us to flash this to our micro SD card. And I prefer using Etcher. Link for all of this will be in the description. I'm on a Windows PC, so I'm going to grab the Windows Portable version. But if you're on Mac OS, you can grab the Mac OS version. We'll go with Portable here. And once these are finished downloading, I'm going to place them both on my desktop for easy access. So now we have Etcher and the Omni ROM that we're going to be running. Do not unzip this. Leave it just like it is. We're going to start up Etcher. And from within Etcher, we're going to choose Flash from File. That's going to be the Omni ROM. I place mine on my desktop. Next thing you want to do is just double check that you're using the correct micro SD card. I have a cheaper USB 3.0 SD card reader plugged in. And finally, we'll just flash it to that card. Etcher is going to take care of the rest, give it some time to finish up. Once the SD card is ready, you're going to get some pop-ups like this. We'll just go ahead and close them out. And that's it. You're now ready to plug this into your Raspberry Pi 4 and start using Android 11. There's no sign in required or anything like that. It's just going to boot up as long as you have the latest firmware installed on your Raspberry Pi 4. The first boot will take a little longer than any other time you boot it, but as long as you start seeing the Omni ROM here, it's just going to flash through for a few seconds and then we'll be right at the Android desktop. So yeah, it's pretty easy to set up. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth work. You're just going to head over to the settings, go to your networks, turn on Wi-Fi, and then connect to one of your local networks. Then you can use the Aurora store from here and start downloading your favorite applications. You can also sideload different applications or different app stores like Aptoid just to get stuff that's not listed on the Aurora store, but a majority of the good stuff is. If you're into Android and you like the Raspberry Pi, I definitely recommend giving this a try, but that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. All links for everything mentioned are in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.